Welcome and thank you all for joining us today. We have an, an exciting presentation for you all to show how you can automate identity and access management with Elevate AD for Active Directory Automation. Uh, please allow me to introduce our host for today, the Director of Professional Services at Elevate HR, Emily Erickson. Hi, Livingstone. Thanks for that introduction. Um, as Livingston mentioned, I lead our services team here at Elevate HR. In our previous role, I was involved in some of the architecture and design work for our Active Directory Automation Suite, Elevate AD. So glad to be speaking with all of you here today about how we can automate identity and access management. We're going to start off with a quick introduction to Elevate HR as a company, a little bit about who we are and, and what we do as an organization. We are the original developers of Microsoft's HR product suite. We actually sold our first round of IP to Microsoft just over 10 years ago, and our most recent round of IP went into the product for all customers as of April last year. And we've continued from there to expand our product line and to work with customers like all of you to help make the most of people management capabilities within the Microsoft ecosystem. And that's really the angle from which we approach identity and access management as well. This concept of automating user access and security rights, safeguarding compliance like CCPA, GDPR, and SOX is the natural automatic results of a standard HR process to onboard a new employee, to update, transfer, or offboard employees, contractors, vendors, or customers. So really any person that would need access to your internal systems. And I'm speaking to you today from my uh, virtual home office here in, in New York City, um, but we do operate globally. We have offices throughout North America and we have customers live in 121 countries worldwide leveraging our software products. And I emphasize this, this global span and this reach because all of our customers, no matter where they are, are embracing digital transformation and technology in some way. And it's changed the way that all of us work and all of us operate particularly in the professional and financial services industries, we're looking at a contemporary workforce, right? We're social, we're responsive, we're engaged. Everyone's searching for ways to help develop this culture of empowerment, to get people more engaged in the work that they're doing, to make sure that people can receive recognition for the work that they're doing, and starting to connect that into concepts of digital intelligence, making sure that we can collaborate, that we can share knowledge across the organization internally, and doing that in a world of work that looks a little bit different today than it might have a year and a half ago. We need this concept of a contemporary workplace and the definition for that, again, a little different today than it might have been in past years. But no matter what, what we need to do is make sure that there's a way to connect people, whether we're working virtually or whether we're in the office, um, whether we're front lines in a customer service oriented role, we need to make sure that everybody throughout their multiple different experiences at a company have some way to align the work that they do to the purpose and impact of the organization that we work for. To do that, we need to stay interconnected. We need to find a way as organizations to be creative and to adapt to the way that we're engaging people and make sure that our employees have concepts of continuous learning and development as we go. But to make all of this happen, if we want to keep people connected and we want to make sure that people have this constant path to learn, we need to do that through technology. And if we're doing that through technology, we need to make sure that people have the access that they need to the right information at the right time. And that's where something like Active Directory becomes absolutely mission critical to what we're doing as an organization. I'll use compliance as, as an example, right? You've got this global move towards data management and data policies and compliance everywhere. You've got GDPR in Europe. You have the California Privacy Act here in the States starting to set the, the trend for where the rest of the country may start to move. You've got an additional trend of this concept of policy driven data access. How do I know who should have access to what information internally without needing to pick up the phone and ask someone or ping a manager and have them tell me, yeah, give, give Bob what Sally has. We want this to be data driven. We want this to be policy driven and we want this to be automated. And if we translate that from a compliance standpoint into what we're trying to do from a planning perspective as a company, particularly in, in professional services and financial services, we want to try to find a way to connect what we're doing from an identity strategy to what we're doing for our enterprise strategy as an organization. And we want to make sure that we're supporting our standard business processes through this. So 
as we're onboarding people at at scale, whether we're growing through acquisition or whether we're we're growing organically, we need to make sure that the process of bringing people into an organization feels engaging and, and seamless. And so important, right, particularly in services industries where people need access to technology to do their jobs. When I show up for my first day of work, I want to make absolutely certain that I have access to the applications and the technology and the services and the systems that I need to be successful from the get go. And we want to make sure that we're immediately realizing the impact of promotions as well. So the access rights that I might need on day one might be very different than what I'm going to need a year, two years, three years down the road. I might grow into more uh, management capability internally. I might take on more and have access to more financial or more people data, and that's got to be updated and automatic. As well as the, the flip side of that, as I'm offboarding and leaving the company, if I've had access to sensitive data internally, whether that's access to customer data or access to data about myself or other people, we want to make sure that we can shut that down and manage that automatically and help keep that up to date if roles are moving and, and scheduling is happening in bulk. And we're really engaging the entire organization in these conversations, from our operations teams to client engagement to technology, but it's our talent culture, our people operations, our HR teams that are really managing the initial piece of this process. They're the ones initiating an onboarding or a promotion or an offboarding process. So how do we simplify this? How do we tie everything together and how do we automate this? That's where Elevate ID comes in. What we're talking about is HR driven lifecycle management. So we're starting with our, our cloud HR applications or our ERP applications if we have an integrated strategy. This is where your standard lifecycle processes are happening. And we're going to come in and automate the process of taking an employee record or a vendor or a customer a contractor. Automating the creation of their user accounts and access rights in Active Directory, whether that's on prem or in Azure or a hybrid model, making sure that data points are synchronizing back and forth bi directionally, tri directionally, depending on the number of applications we have in play so that everyone's working with the same set of data, even though one system is the source and owns that. And we're also not just handling data, we're also managing security rights and profiles. So anything that might be assigned through Active Directory or Azure Active Directory, things like managing your licensing, your security groups, which might be security focused, might be communication and collaboration focused, like automatically joining new people to the Teams channels that they should be accessing. So HR drives it and IT manages the approval and the policy setup. So everyone's engaged in the initial design of a process and everyone gets to sit back, you know, relax, enjoy the flight as Elevate AD automates this for you in the background. So how do we differentiate from a product perspective? We're really talking about a couple of key items. What does Elevate AD bring to the table? We're going to help your teams increase productivity. The idea is that Elevate AD lets you automate the creation of user accounts those provisioning that I mentioned of your Microsoft 365 and Dynamics 365 licenses, assigning all of those policy driven security roles, giving new hires and newly transferred or promoted employees immediate access to their jobs and tools and help increase productivity from the very start. We're also helping to manage risk. We're dramatically increasing security by automating security rights and changes based on any HR driven attribute like a job code or a location or a company or any and all of the above. This is what's going to give users this immediate access to key applications or security groups, teams, channels, and then removes them when people leave the organization. So really keeping things up to date. We're also helping to address compliance and governance. We're giving you robust audit logs for all of your user provisioning requests and security updates. So you've got this auditable security matrix, role-driven configuration access that makes sure you can manage who has access to what services and applications at any point in time. And we're also helping to, to manage the cost of operating, right? Automatic provisioning is reducing costs by avoiding inefficiencies or avoiding human error, which can lead to bad data with high, high costs. It's reducing the need for custom developed user provisioning solutions, you know, those PowerShell scripts stacked on PowerShell scripts to manage this, things that are built over time on legacy platforms. And most importantly, we're also significantly lowering the risk of audit fines or data corrections that might come from granting people incorrect security access. So that's why 
Elevate AD, why we should be interested. Let's talk in a little bit more detail about what exactly the application is intended to handle. As I mentioned, the key here is to actually administer regular Active Directory automation components based on lifecycle processes. So there's really, if I had to distill it down, three key actions that we're taking here. The first is the ability to automatically create and enable Active Directory users based on any person record that you have in your HRIS or in your ERP application. We're also at that point starting to assign security groups in on-prem and Azure AD, and then assigning any security roles that you might need within your source systems on the HR and ERP or CRM side if we're managing rights for customers or for vendors through a customer engagement or sales or marketing application. Second big item is keeping that in sync throughout time. So based on policies that we've set up and based on just natural movement of people internally, we're able to automatically update the access that someone has, assign and manage security, and assign and manage licenses. Which takes us to our third item, which is automatically deactivating user accounts by parameter and taking those licenses that might have been removed at the point of termination and putting them back in a pool so that we can reassign them to new people when they come in. And doing this both within Active Directory and managing all of these components within your source systems, whether that's Dynamics 365 or Workday or another uh, HR or ERP application. Because Elevate AD is designed to connect out with one or multiple applications at the same time. So it's very common for us to connect not just into Active Directory and one other internal system, we'll connect into multiple. So that means your ERP, that means your human resources application, any sales or marketing or field service or project operations and project service automation applications that you might need to connect to. And in addition to those packaged managed applications, we can also connect in to any custom apps that you might have as well. That might mean connecting into Microsoft's Dataverse or Power Platform to help automate rights and access into any Power Apps that you've deployed and are managing. That also means that we can connect into any other applications via a REST or a SOAP API as well, depending on what you're leveraging internally. If we take this one step deeper, right? We've talked about the why, we've talked a little bit about the what, and we've seen everything that we can start to integrate with. From an architectural perspective, what we're going to look at right here is how this starts to be structured internally. So the idea is that we start with a series of source connections. We come in here and we're identifying, OK, where are we synchronizing data to and from? In the example we're going to look at today, we're going to be leveraging Dynamics 365 Human Resources, which is the HR application within Microsoft's uh, Dynamics 365 product suite. And we're also going to be setting up connections for our on-prem and our Azure Active Directory. We're going to onboard a new employee and when that happens, we're going to go ahead and create our Active Directory user account in our on-prem Active Directory. In this scenario, we're using Azure AD Connect already in place to synchronize and federate up through to Azure. But if you're using Azure Active Directory only, as you see, we can go straight to Azure and bypass on-prem AD, or we can manage our own synchronizations between on-prem and Azure Active Directory as well. Once we're here, though, once we're in the cloud, that gives us access to manage not just our Azure Active Directory security groups, but also any licensing that we might need to apply throughout the entire Microsoft suite. And we're taking all of this and we're making sure that these accounts are automatically synchronized back into our source systems for authentication and application of security rights and access and sending any data that Active Directory might own. In many cases, things like your company email address, or your company phone number, and making sure that that's synchronized back into our source systems. And then we just repeat for all of the different scenarios that we might have in play. So now that we've given you an overview, let's jump into the system and start to see this in action. We're going to start off in our primary source system. We're going to start off in our connection. We're going to look at Dynamics 365 Human Resources. Now I'm in here as a system administrator, so I can kind of do and see anything that I'd like. And in the center of my page here, I've got all of my workspaces and all of my dashboards. We're not going to run you through the full onboarding process because there's nothing really special you need to do to make this work. But I am going to start in my people management page. This is where I'm seeing any candidates that we have to hire. And I can jump into my employee changes view to see a list of every hire action that we have in progress. I can see that we have a hire action in here for Jeremy Gloves 
it started, it just needs someone to complete. And that's really all you need to do on the HR side. You complete the hire. I'm going to validate that my information looks correct. I'm going to validate that my new hire in here, Jeremy, as I can see, is plugged in with the appropriate position information. So we're putting him into the right place in the organization. You can see that he's being hired into a sales manager role. So that's really important. That's going to help drive the policy and the security rights and access that we're giving down the road. So we're going to come back to this in a second. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and complete this process. And that action of hiring a new employee is going to be the trigger for a lot of downstream actions that we're going to look at in just a second in Elevate AD. So we're going to shift applications a little bit and we're going to pop into Elevate AD. We're going to start this off on my dashboard. So this is where I'm going to come in to track and see anything that's happening. What's working? Is it failing? Is it working? Why is it? I can drill down and see as much information as I'd like, track any successfully completed processes and understand what's going on internally. One of the best places to start, though, is on the connection screen where I can come in and see all of the different applications that I'm connecting to. In this case, my connections might be things like an ERP, an HR system, any Dataverse or Power Platform applications I might have. And if I click into one of these systems, they're all going to be structured fairly similarly. I'm going to have a list of what we call active entities. Now, we make a couple of assumptions on first install to make the configuration process easier for you. We know the standard sort of data entities and structures that people are using, and we pre-populate them for you. If I come in and take a look at an entity, this is going to give me a list of every single property that exists on this data structure in this environment. And what that means is I can use this data for mapping, so I can send data to or from these fields, and I can also use them as the basis for queries, so I can identify anybody that's in a particular country or a particular zip code and make sure that I'm treating them in the same way or in different ways, depending on what our policies dictate. And what's nice about this is if I'm looking at this and saying, hey, I'm, I'm actually using a different area of the system that I'd like to include, we make those available for you too. And all of this is metadata driven. So that means we're not doing data migration cycles to get this information into the system. As soon as we make a connection with your environment, we're going to have instant access into every single data point that you have so we can use that for synchronizations. Access to this application is role driven as well from a security perspective. So we're able to make sure that people might have read only access to information or we can encrypt certain data points that you might flag as sensitive to make sure that people have access to the right information as we go. I'm going to come in here and see you look at all of our security groups. A lot of these are still completely out of the box here, so I'm seeing all of those. But if you've built any custom security roles in your environment and um, I, I dare you to find me someone that has never created a custom security role in any HR or ERP system. Again, because it's metadata driven, we'll have immediate access to all of these here and available to assign out as needed. Now, that's on our HR system. Our Active Directory and Azure Active Directory applications are going to look very similar, except, of course, the data that we're working with. It's just going to be one data entity. That's the user. But again, if you know AD really well, these properties should look very, very familiar to you. You can send data back and forth and use them in policies. Security groups that we have on the Active Directory side will appear here, as well as any available domains or UPNs that we might want to set as primary for a particular policy. And I'm also able to come in here and track and see any of my path structures that I might have. So we're going to read your Active Directory structure and see any of the paths or OUs that we might want to set up and manage information through. Azure AD, same thing, so I won't repeat each of these options, but this is what lets me come in and manage licenses. Um, and I am seeing a, a question or a comment that came in saying, uh, it sounds like you manage software licenses. How does the system know who should get what license? That is a fantastic question. I am going to get to that in just a second. But the key is that we set up a series of queries and a series of policies that identify exactly who in the system gets what. And we do that based on our source system. So in this case, Dynamics 365 HR, I might set up a series of queries to go find people in particular departments or find someone with a particular job code that might match. So based on any data point, we're going to identify exactly who you are down to the tiniest detail, if that's how granular you need to get. And we're going to assign that out to a policy, which I'll show you in just a second. Before I get there, I want to show us mappings here very quickly, because now that we've identified what our systems are and what needs to connect, now we're going to want to come in here and start to set up where the data is going and what that data looks like. 
you can set up as many different mappings as you might need to. And this comes into play because maybe for our internal employees, we need to make sure that everyone has an on-prem AD account as well as Azure. Maybe for our contractors, they don't need access to any of our other on-prem systems. I wanna go straight to Azure. So I might set up an Azure AD only mapping for some people internally and not for others. The idea is once I set that, I define my data sources. Where is the data coming from? And then I define my target entities. Where is it going? In this example, I'm actually sending data to three different systems. My primary system in here is Active Directory. So I'm sending data like my manager relationships, my title, my department and information. I'm choosing my target property and my source system from the dropdown. Again, pull directly in from our connections. And then same thing. And my, my property types can change as well. Properties are probably most common. This means basically a data field in a source system, but I can also pass a static value. I can handle any transformations or expressions, any formulas. We can synchronize images between Azure Active Directory and your HR or ERP systems. And of course, send over those manager relationships as well. But it's not one way, right? There might be things like a company email address or phone number that I'm sending from my Active Directory user account back into my source HR system. So we're able to manage and connect all of this up. Next, this is the mapping and where everything goes. We're going to connect all of the dots in here at the policy level. So when I jump into the policies here, this is where I've started to say, okay, I know what my systems are. I know what data I'm sending back and forth. How do I apply these out to specific people? So this is answering that question of um, how does the system know who should get what license? We build out policies and they're hierarchy driven. So I might have something that says every active employee in the company gets an active directory account. But my sales department is going to get different security groups than IT, than HR, than finance. And that's still a little too big picture for me. I want to drill down into a specific role. So what my sales managers get access to are going to be very different than my sales representatives. Let me give you an example. In this case, I'm going to grab a policy that's designed to pull from a query to find any active employees in the system. I'm going to choose my policy connections. What's happening in here? The first thing we're doing is we're creating and enabling an Active Directory account. And we can spread this out too, right? We can create the account X number of days, maybe two weeks in advance of a start date, but enable it, turn it on, on day one when someone starts. So you've got a lot of control over this. I might come in here and set up basic security groups that everybody should get. Maybe I'm giving everybody employee self-service access within our source HR systems. Whatever it is that I need to set up, I'm able to do this here. That might include things like workflow notifications, making sure everybody gets them through email, choosing a startup page internally, the country or the time zone that people should be started in. You can get very granular with all of this. And then as I start to drill down, my sales department might get a little bit more. And if I get into a sales manager, for example, this is where we connect in another application, a sales and marketing application where I'm granting very specific security roles to someone that matches my sales director or sales manager query. So a lot of different options for how we might want to start setting all of this up and a lot of different ways that we can start to make sure people have access to information within a single view in the system. So I'm seeing a couple of other questions and I'm gonna show you a couple other items on the auditing and reporting side, but I do wanna make sure I can get to questions that have come in. So the next one I'm seeing is saying that we have Dynamics 365 for finance, but Workday for HR, can I still use your application? Absolutely. So you might have seen on the mapping that these are designed to connect to multiple applications at the same time. We'd set up a mapping to allow identity and access rights within Workday, within finance and operations, and within your on-prem and Azure Active Directories, depending on how that's structured. We'll identify what your source system is for each property. My guess is probably Workday for most of the HR attributes, but we can make sure that those worker records are propagated into Dynamics 365 Finance for your hierarchies and make sure that any user, any person that should have access in finance, like an AP clerk or someone like that, has their account structured and set up, their workflow settings set, and security rights as well. So long answer, short, yes, absolutely, we can connect both of those. Um, a follow-up related question says, um, what about others, vendors or service providers? Can I use your system to automate giving them access to? And can I disable accounts when they are done working for us? Um, yes, absolutely. So we do support connections into other enterprise resource planning applications like a 
um, and, and SAP HANA, for example, or other services or accounts, as long as the application has a REST API or even a SOAP API connection, we can manage access um, and disable accounts automatically too. In many cases, disabling an Active Directory account will actually cascade through and shut off system access. But if you're working with an application that doesn't necessarily have single sign-on, we can also connect into those apps as well. A couple of other things I want to highlight for you, um, and please do keep the, the questions coming. I'm, I'm seeing a couple of more folks typing. As I jump in, I want to highlight a couple of other things, and that's from an audit standpoint, any changes that are made. You've got two types of audits and transactions in the system. The first was where we landed on in our home page, that ability to see, OK, what's processing, what's syncing, what's the schedule, what's working and what's not. In here, this is where we're going to be able to track system configuration changes. So if someone came in and updated a policy, if someone changed the security rights or roles that people get, I can come in here and start to manage that right from this experience. So you can see that earlier today I came in and changed a query. I added a new filter. I can scroll down and see that a colleague of mine actually came in and created a new policy for a purchasing department, and I can track that. So you've got a lot of really good, solid ability to come in and track all of this here and understand what's going on and how this connects. You'll also be able to see this and drill down not just into the changes that are made, but to see any people that are being processed at each policy level. I can connect to that in from a policy perspective, or I can jump in and take a look at the people management application up top and see any attribute that's been updated for any person internally across all of their different applications. In this case, we're just connecting into an ERP, so I can see the data points that are being synchronized. I can see if this is a new hire or this is someone that's pending an update and keep track of everything that's processing. I can aggregate all of this into dashboards as well so I can view it in a single place. I also do have an opportunity to opt out, so really key for GDPR scenarios where I need to make sure that I'm able to scrub a person's data from the system and upon request. This is going to remove a record of that user from our database as well as any data points that have been synchronizing through the system. So you do have the ability both to manage high volumes of data and scrub that in one fell swoop as needed. We can also manage a lot of um, sort of automatic updates of information during migration or go live cycles as well as you continue. All right, I'm seeing a couple more questions come in, so I will do my best to get all of them here um, as we go through this. And again, more than happy to follow up with additional questions as we continue. Um, next up, I heard you mention Power Apps. Can you grant security for new apps if people create them? Um, the answer is, is yes. So security rights for the Power Platform and the Dataverse are in many cases managed by uh, essentially Azure Active Directory groups or O365 groups as you might be familiar with them. And we can come in and manage security rights and automatically apply those out to different people as we start to create and manage their, their information throughout the system. So yes, there's a lot of different ways that we can track and manage that. So I know we're just getting to time here and thank you all so much for the questions. I see a couple more coming in. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and put up my own contact information. Um, as well as the Livingstones, uh, who kicked off the introduction, and our colleague Logan. Please feel free to reach out to any of us with any other questions that you might have around identity and access management and the dynamics or the Microsoft space, anything dealing with automation of Active Directory or any combination of the letters H and R and A and D. Uh, we are more than happy to follow up and answer anything that you might have. Thank you all so much for your time here today. If I leave you with anything, at the end of today's session so that we do have the ability to uh, to come in and automate all of your identity and access rights across all of your business applications to make sure that people have access to the right data at the right time within all of your applications. Thanks so much, everyone. Look forward to further conversations. <laughs>